Driven Nashville. If you're new to the channel, we produce weekly enthusiast-driven car and truck content. We dropped a Hummer recently, but today we have a very, very, very cool, very special 1965 C2 Corvette. Now, this Corvette, I think, is one of probably the best looking generation Corvettes. Just look at it. This is pretty much an all original car. It's a very, very rare blue color. It's got the knockoff wheels. It's got a blueprint engine in it, which you'd never even know. It's got factory matching numbers. It looks like the stock car. Now, we're really excited to feature this car because, you know, back in 1965, this competed against the Aston Martin DB5 and the Ferrari 250 GTB. This one was 3,180 pounds, right? And in many, many ways, just like the new C8 Corvette does today, this thing is beating them at their own game for so much less money. Back in 1965, you could have picked this thing up for $11,000 cheaper than its competitors, which I just mentioned. Now, inflation adjusted, guys, that's a $107,000 difference. Yeah. Hey guys, Brent Novachin, really good to be here. I'm a huge car guy, and I'm really excited to give you a little bit more of a close and up tail uh, up close look at my 1965 Chevy Corvette Stingray. Um, I bought this from a neighbor uh, back in California who was the second owner. Um, older gentleman played football, just got to the point where he couldn't drive it and he blessed me with a great deal on it and I couldn't be happier to own it now. This is a Nassau Blue, which GM made 6,022 of these, so a little bit of a rare paint job. Um, a couple of the options they offered a side flow exhaust and they also offered a, a rear venting exhaust as you can see this is a side flow so it really gives us a nice rumble when we're driving um, some of the factory options that they did include is power windows power antenna um, factory air conditioning which was really rare okay this car came with a 327 cubic inch small block v8 uh, put out 355 horse which was a decent amount of horse back then. Now they did offer big block models as well. Um, those are quite a bit more rare, but with the small block, you're getting a lot less weight and you're getting a lot of thump for it. So I think it's a good combination. With this one, I did pull out the numbers matching small block and put in a all aluminum 383 stroker with 455 horsepower and 450 foot pounds of torque. So it's got a lot of great pull to it. A lot of good pull. One of the really cool things GM used to do is even though there's not a lot of technology in these old cars, they thought things through. So just right here from the seat belt clamp to keep it all organized and keeping it look nice. Um, from a cockpit situation, all the gauges are really accessible and viewable. I like the fact that the gauge, or excuse me, the tachometer is right there front and center so you can really keep an eye on that because as you know, that's one of the more important elements. Uh, fuel pressure right, or excuse me, oil pressure right here. Obviously these are gonna be our two main items we're gonna be looking at when driving. Of course, water temperature, you don't wanna get too high with the battery and the fuel being on the left-hand side here, okay? Um, some of the really cool old items would be like, for instance, the power antenna, which is right here. And you can see in the back here, lifting up. <laughs> Look at that, that's neat. Right? Yeah. That's kind of cool. Uh, left the old cassette in there, all right? Clock, right dead center, which is interesting, I found, because a lot of the new cars, when you think when you go back to the, uh, early 90s, everyone started making a real big focus on the clock being in the center of the car. Well, okay. you go back here to 1965, what do we have? A really large analog clock right in the center for you. So I yeah. think that's pretty cool. Now, this is a four speed, right? It's a four speed, exactly. Um, venting right down here, and you can pull this out for a little bit more airflow. Uh, four speed right here in the center. All right, it's a little bit different when you're driving and you're getting used to it, but to get it in reverse, you really got to get in here a little bit forward, and then you've got your access to reverse. Right, and you have to push that in, right? Yeah, this is locked in. I cannot get in reverse until I actually pull up, yep. and I'm going to get in here. It takes a little bit used to to get it in there, okay? But once you get it back, this will pop down, and it, revert, it prohibits you, excuse me, from getting it into reverse. Um, parking brake is manual, just like that. Pull it out. And these are all original, right? Everything you see is original? Everything you see is original here. I, um, the seats, I did redo the seats here with a higher end leather than the original noggle hide, just from a okay. comfortability perspective. So yeah, yeah, and a matter of fact, the originals were still in really, really good shape. However, I just really wanted a little bit more comfort on it. But sure. everything from all the beating to the back of the seat, this is all original. Nice. Uh, just did front seat covers. but really try to do my best to keep everything in the original format really not hacking this car up in any way 
So for a convertible of the day, the top really, really hides away really nicely, I feel, in this car. And it's something you could do even at a stoplight by yourself, which I've actually done. Simply pop open the, the hatch cover. Mm, look at that. That's right down here. I'm gonna latch Boom. these two. It's like, once, a, it's like a Porsche 981 Spider. There you go. The same. Now, once we get these latched, it's just simply one last latch on the interior to, la to lock down the front unit here, yep. which obviously you're going to want to make sure is done really good. Don't want that blowing off on you in the wind. Sure. It changes That's the look it. up, but it's still a very nice looking car. I think for this, we'll keep the top down, but I'll show you how quickly you can put it down. Wow, so you can do it inside the car. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. No kidding, you don't even have to get out. That's impressive. Just like that. <laughs> so this car, I put uh, some aftermarket BF Goodwrench red lines on it to give that a little more classic feel. These are 215 70R15s and I've got 225 70R15s in the back. A little bit larger wheel, which fills up the, the, uh, the panel there a little bit better. These are what are called knockoff wheels. Well, some of you out there, a little more novice, might think knockoffs, oh, so they're fake. No, that's not the case. Back when these cars were racing against the likes of what Adam referenced, they made this knockoff wheel, which is a single spindle as opposed to having lug nuts. And to get this cap off, you actually use a lead hammer and you knock you have the hammer. this off. I do have the hammer inside the car to take them off. And we'll show you here in a minute. You can see right here where it's been hit. Now it's a lead hammer, so it's a little softer, obviously, so it doesn't damage this. They manufacture these and design these to where when you're driving, the rotation of the wheel actually is tightening the cap and the single spindle. Okay, so if that's a real racy item here. These knockoffs are very valuable. They're hard to come by. Um, These are like $10,000 wheels. Yeah, if, if you get an original set of knockoffs, they can run you $10,000 plus. That's correct. Wow. Okay. This is the knockoff hammer. So as we previously said, <laughs> it's a... <laughs> oh man, this thing's serious. That's right. This it's, is right out of Game of Thrones. And you've got lead man, ends to it. It is very heavy, right? Woo. That is cool. Steel and lead. So. To get the wheels off, you literally would come down here and hit this in order to spin it off. You can see right here where they've been hit, but they're made to take some abuse. Okay. You can see all three. Yeah, it's it's fairly interesting, but yeah, <laughs> so cool. This is your uh, this is your hammer to take them off. Odds are they're not going to have this at your local tire department, so you're going to uh, yeah, bring no, that. you're not going to Napa for that. Yeah, one. no, exactly, exactly. Well, items on these cars that really uh, that old saying they don't make them like they used to applies. I think you start looking at the top of the windshield here chrome steel it's still in phenomenal shape after the top being up and down over so many years this is believe it or not the original windshield that came in this car um, all the chrome and everything from factory this is all factory stuff i mean it's really stood the test of time badging i love the fact that the the name is written out corvette and stingray not like the new cars but all just a bunch of numbers right we actually have names of cars back then which is really really cool uh, if you look at the brake lights here, a little bit of a torpedo look, right? Pretty racy, pretty pretty fast looking car and, and the small little details that GM did. They really did a good job on this. For the side flow exhaust, we've got vented aluminum here to where this stays pretty darn cool. Last thing you want to get out and have your leg fry on the side of an exhaust panel, uh, that's which is right behind there. here. So very, very important yeah. step. Yeah, Dodge could take one out of the, the, the that chapter, right? There you the go. And in a similar car back in the day, you know, when Shelby started racing the Cobra against the Corvette, I mean, those side flow exhausts, everyone's ever been in one of those cars, that is a dangerous proposition getting in and out of that car. So this is a really, really big element of a safety item. You've got your Corvette badging here. I love the red, white, and blue. This just, this car just speaks to America, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this gives us our heritage. And of course, on the front here, the iconic checkered flag, Chevy emblem. Love it. Headlights. When I was a kid, I used to love the pop-up headlights. Well, this is about where they started, right here. It's <laughs> awesome. So you've got a dual cluster headlight, obviously, with your oh, low beams, so and then you cool. add the high beam. But yeah, pretty cool, huh? I mean, I think that the car itself 
with the lights up gives it a totally different look. Totally. It screams 60s to me. Shut that with, door real quick. With the lights up. Yeah. Huh. Pretty neat. And in the front here with the running lights here, you can see once again, a little bit more of a torpedo look. And they sculpted the front panel here to go right around that. Something you don't see these days. Out of Indiana to build a 383 stroker. Uh, aluminum heads that are manufactured by Blueprint. This one came off the dyno at 444 horsepower with 440 foot-pounds of torque, which is a ton of torque for this little motor. Um, it really gets it moving along really, really good. Couple that with the four-speed manual transmission, you're in business, that's for sure. said earlier you can see that the gauge cluster here with the tack is very visible the speedometer is a lot smaller it's interesting right you can see the numbers are a little bit smaller there and obviously the two most important things on any car especially older are going to be your tachometer and your oil pressure with the blueprint heads in this car they are float so well and a little bit oversized radiator that the that the, the car really stays under temperature really darn well I mean most GMs you're going to see run between 190 and 200 degrees. As you can see on this one, we're barely over 150. So, and it's taken us the better part of this entire drive to get up to town. wasn't so put together they're all original it would have been you know enticing to maybe consider something like that I mean look if you're gonna have the look and feel of an old car with the technology uh, of a modern suspension and things like that then how can you beat it right um, I just can't imagine taking a car like this that's pretty darn original and, 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 and doing something like that to it but if we started from a place that was different, I think it's a great, great thing. I'm a, like I said, I'm a big fan of a resto mod. Jumping in a car with a LS motor, air conditioning flowing, and uh, it's a nice smooth ride. Like you said, this thing does pretty good, but one thing it's not, it's quiet. So. 